Welcome to the Pleasant Green Missionary Baptist Church Sunday School. This is Lesson 8 for October the 20th, 2019. We are still in Unit 2 entitled Responses to God's Faithfulness. And our topic for today taken from the Adult Quarterly is Just Say the Word. The devotional reading is taken from the book of James, chapter 5. Uh, verses 13 through 18. Uh, background scripture is taken from the Gospel according to Luke chapter 7 uh, verses 1 through 10 and our print passage today uh, that our lesson is taken from uh, is also from the 7th chapter of Luke's Gospel uh, verses 1 through 10. Our key verse reads that is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you but say the word and my servant will be healed and that's taken from Luke chapter 7 verse 7 from the NIV translation our lesson aims today number one is to examine the faith expressed by the centurion as he told Jesus to speak the word and his servant would be healed secondly to uh, reflect on the power of Jesus as he acquiesced to the servants or to the centurion's request and then thirdly to become emboldened to share your own experiences uh, with God's showing his power in your own lives we have two outlines that will be uh, part of our lesson today the first outline is entitled a cry for help and the second outline is entitled a response to a cry for help and we are certainly uh, thankful and privileged today to be able to share God's word with you. Another opportunity to be able to uh, just examine uh, the ministry of the life of Christ. And uh, at least according to Luke's gospel, uh, just to gauge um, how individuals uh, responded to uh, Jesus' ministry. Uh, but this is a beautiful lesson that uh, will help us to understand faith in a deeper way uh, and, and perhaps some things that uh, you have not heard uh, or taken a look at uh, as in terms of uh, what it really means to have faith. And so we want to read a little bit of this biblical context that is uh, offered in our lesson quarterly. Uh, the Gospel of Luke portrays Jesus as the long-awaited Messiah and Savior of humankind. Uh, specific points of emphasis in the book include Jesus' compassion for those considered the lowest in society and the suffering masses. And also, Jesus is uh, portrayed as the perfect man whose interest extended to all humankind. And then from um, uh, our lesson standard, uh, Matthew chapter 8 verses 5 through 13 contains another record of the healing of the centurion's servant uh, that we find in uh, the gospel according to Luke. But I would like to share just a little bit of the setting uh, for this lesson today before we begin. And so uh, through the witness um, uh, of a Roman soldier we are given a fresh look at what faith is and what faith in Jesus means in a practical way. Um, faith uh, is a word that we hear a lot about but how would we define it? So the setting um, is a Jewish town of Capernaum on the shore of the Sea of Galilee and so Jesus had just finished teaching about practical obedience. You can see that back in the sixth chapter of Luke verses uh, 46 through 49. So uh, Jesus is now interacting with a person uh, in a crisis. And so we hope that you will get your Bible and uh, be prepared to um, take some notes if you if you will that we might be able to uh, study this lesson together and learn something together. Uh, it is a lesson that will help us reflect uh, on something that I noticed uh, as I was reading this 
uh, and we don't hear a lot about Christian character um, uh, as it is defined uh, in terms of uh, of the believers uh, we need to talk more about Christian character but as we look at this centurion today in this lesson uh, from the seventh chapter of Luke uh, I want you to pay attention to the fact that this centurion's uh, faith has shaped his character this centurion's faith in Jesus Christ has shaped his character so we'll talk about that a little bit but this first outline is entitled a cry for help and this is taken from uh, Luke chapter uh, 7 verses 1 through 5 and I want to read this uh, from the King James Version and the Bible says uh, now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people he entered into Capernaum and a certain centurion's servant who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die and when he heard of Jesus he sent unto him the elders of the Jews beseeching him that he would come and heal his servant verse 4 and when they came to Jesus they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy uh, for whom he should do this uh, for he loveth our nation and he had built us a synagogue so they're describing this centurion to Jesus uh, and they are imploring him to come um, and do this thing and heal this this servant of this centurion um, but as we noted here uh, Jesus had been teaching uh, uh, kind of in, in, in likened to the uh, Sermon on the Mount this is according to Luke the sermon uh, in the plain or on the plain um, Jesus had just entered into Capernaum uh, and so Jesus had been teaching principles uh, and what I uh, found about this uh, uh, particular man this centurion uh, we'll we'll get to that uh, the fact that he heard about Jesus uh, uh, this centurion is a Gentile uh, but he has heard Jesus uh, reputation perhaps he has heard some of his teachings uh, and but uh, he is in a desperate situation and he is uh, reaching out to Jesus uh, through these elders of the Jews to come uh, and heal his servant so uh, Jesus initial ministry in Galilee uh, included uh, calling the calling of his disciples you can see that back over in Luke chapter 5 verse 1 through uh, the 6th chapter uh, and preaching to the multitudes and so immediately following this discourse he returned to Capernaum uh, this uh, he adopted uh, this in this place uh, where he performed several of his messianic signs so this was like uh, Jesus headquarters if you will so uh, Luke introduces a Roman centurion whose uh, highly regarded servant was ill and at the point of death and so uh, this was a rare uh, master servant relationship uh, but the commentary goes on to talk about that slaves were usually treated harshly their lives were considered meaningless to the Gentile masters especially among uh, the Romans <clears throat> uh, so the law described slaves as living tools uh, with no rights uh, and who could be killed at their masters will so this centurion's compassion is really what we want to lift today uh, for his servant who was ill prompted him to send Jewish elders to Jesus with the request that he come and heal his servant as I said earlier uh, this this man's faith uh, his uh, this centurion's faith uh, has shaped his character and one of the attributes of his character is compassion 
for his fellow man. I hope that you uh, uh, can sense where I'm going with this uh, because uh, the Bible teaches us that we ought to love one another. In other words, we ought to be able to relate to one another in a way that Christ would relate uh, to individuals, uh, particularly those that are not in relation uh, ship with him but this type of faith is desperately needed uh, where we can respond uh, uh, to one another as brothers and sisters in Christ but how would that uh, be manifest except we learn these principles from the Word of God uh, and that's what uh, we don't we're not given so much information as to uh, what this centurion heard and how he uh, uh, may have listened to Jesus teachings uh, maybe just heard from others but uh, the fact remains is that he has heard something about Christ and he wants him to come do something for someone else not for him but for his servant again uh, thinking about other people uh, having compassion on other people uh, it's not about him, but it's about someone who is dear to him uh, that he is seeking Jesus out. And so this is uh, something that uh, is desperately needed today. But this centurion's cry for help was based on his extraordinary character, uh, especially for a Roman military officer. Uh, he was clearly a man of compassion uh, who put the needs of those unable to help themselves above his own. I just want to stick a pin in that because uh, we see people in our churches today and our society today who are vulnerable because of their circumstance. They are depending on others to help them. This centurion's servant is down, flat of his back, ready to die, doesn't know uh, if he's going to die, doesn't know where his help is going to come from, but somebody else is speaking up for him uh, or on his behalf that he uh, might be healed of his affliction. And so, uh, but unlike most Romans, uh, he loved the Jews and respected their religion, this centurion. So as a result, uh, they willingly interceded on his behalf with Jesus. So, but, uh, you know, there's no guarantee, uh, as the lesson helps us to understand, that uh, what we ask for will be granted as we desire. But uh, he will respond according to his will, he being Christ, and with what uh, is best uh, for us. So it, it does, however, attest to uh, a track record of sincerity and distinguish us from opportunists uh, who only approach Christ when they are in need. So additionally building a, a positive relationship with other believers and demonstrating genuine compassion for them can motivate them to intercede for and with us in our time of need. Um, you all have heard it said that what affects one affects all. And so uh, uh, this centurion, though he probably, I'm sure, could get someone else to take this servant's place uh, if he dies, but he wants him to stay alive. So he's doing all that he can do uh, uh, to seek out Jesus Christ, who he believes can help him uh, or help his uh, uh, servant. Uh, remain alive but uh, you know this this centurion uh, his character is on display for all of us and this is the thing and you know as I was reading this I was thinking about um, uh, Matthew chapter 13 and we won't have time to get into all of that but I I would hope that you would read that uh, in its entirety concerning parables how Jesus taught and particularly where it deals with the sower who went out to sow. Uh, and, and, and my point is, uh, we are all affected differently by God's word. We react differently. 
uh, we respond differently to the messages, the things that God teaches us to do. Uh, one example would, would be if God tells us to love one another, but we say we are not. Uh, we're not going to love certain individuals or if the Bible tells us to forgive one another and we say that we are not going to forgive and so we have different reactions some of us when we uh, become uh, we are undergoing tests uh, uh, that that are produced by the Word of God we we react differently so but 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 what I want you to see uh, that faith is produced by God's Word so it's essential that when we hear it that we believe it there must be a response to what we hear there must be a manifestation of what we believe uh, uh, for others to be able to see how the gospel or the word of God has impacted us so uh, this is the, the sort of the backdrop if you will of this lesson so what is our reaction uh, to the Word of God and so this centurion helps us to understand in a practical way that we can see some things about his character that are produced by however he heard uh, or respected or reverenced the Word of God and reverenced Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior so we know he has compassion we know that he has humility because he doesn't he know this he knows that this is beyond his capability but he is asking for help so he does not have a spirit of pride he has genuine concern uh, he is not selfish uh, uh, about uh, this particular thing he is not trying to get something for himself we could go on and on and on but all of these character traits are produced by the Word of God and our reverence for the Word of God this is how it is played out his attitude is such that he is seeking out uh, help for someone who probably doesn't know he's trying to help uh, uh, or send for help even through Jesus Christ so I hope that we're getting that and, and, and as we read the Word of God it is a mirror for us to see ourselves it is a mirror for us to understand where we have shortcomings and all of us have shortcomings we have things in our character uh, that don't display God's Word in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a light where God can get the glory and this is where we need the help so we can see some practical application um, for our lives as we look at the life of this uh, centurion and, and, and keep in mind Jesus had just finished teaching principles teaching things that that he could uh, uh, help shape the culture that he was uh, uh, or the, the individuals that he was ministering to to help them uh, to be better in their lives so the question is asked here when have you experienced the blessing of effective intercessory prayer in your life and so it's a it's a beautiful thing it is an obligation for us to uh, seek God uh, in, on behalf of others um, so Christ uh, is our mediator between uh, man and God and so we have to uh, understand that uh, I believe the book of 1st Samuel chapter 16 tells us that God doesn't look at the outer appearance as we do but he looks at the heart God looks at the character God looks at the motive God looks at the attitude uh, of our hearts the reflection of our uh, intentions and these kinds of things and sometimes uh, as James records we when we ask God for things we don't get those things because of our selfishness so I want you to keep that in mind so this uh, and, and I do want to make mention as we get into the second outline but by no means are we earning anything I want to make that clear that we're not earning anything before God because of our uh, uh, good character or Christian character this is the way that it should be and I just want to make that clear and our second uh, and last outline is entitled uh, response to a cry for help 
And I want to read this from the NIV translation. This is taken from Luke chapter 7, uh, verses 6 through 10. So Jesus went with them. So he was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, uh, for I do not deserve to have you come under my roof. So you, you, you can see he, he wants Jesus to come, but now he starts to look at himself. This is the type of humility uh, that we should have. And he now he is a uh, uh, suspect about the fact that he's not worthy uh, for Jesus to uh, come under his roof. So he says, in essence, don't bother. Just 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 forget about it. Don't come. So verse 7 said, that is why I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but say the word and my servant will be healed. That's beautiful. He recognizes his state. When we pray, when we talk to God, when we seek God out, do we understand that God is looking at the state that we are in? Are we uh, believers? Are we children of God? Are we uh, uh, motivated by selfishness? Are we uh, really seeking God out in, in a genuine fashion? Are we uh, have some type of other motive at work? But this man recognizes himself as unworthy, unfit. And, and, and that is the reality of all of this. God is, is infinitely holy. Uh, and so we have to pray in the name of Jesus because we are not fit we are not worthy to go to God in our own name because of our nature and because of our sinfulness and because we we, we cannot uh, uh, endure the presence of God apart from Jesus Christ and so this is what Jesus says in the 14th chapter of John I was also thinking about Psalm 1 but uh, but in the 14th chapter of John uh, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And he said, no man comes to the Father but by me. And so it's important to understand we need Christ to be that mediator because we are unworthy. Uh, and, and this centurion, though he is a of, of noble character, and though he has done some good in his life, he has a... a, 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 a a worthy position he has uh, people who report to him uh, we'll see that a little bit later uh, that are under his authority but he recognizes himself as not being fit for Christ to be under his roof so he uh, says to through his friends just speak the word just speak the word and my servant uh, will be healed. Verse 8 says, For I myself uh, am a man under authority uh, with soldiers under me. I tell this one go and he goes and that one come and he comes. And I say to my servant do this and he does it. And so he still is looking at himself as not being fit. Uh, but he recognizes he has some authority, but that does not uh, uh, make him or qualify him as somebody uh, that is worthy. He still uh, is able to humble himself under Christ's authority and who Christ is, even though he has men that will uh, uh, follow his commands. Verse 9 says, when Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him and turning to the crowd following him he said I tell you I have not found such great faith even in Israel that is huge so what Jesus does he turns this desperate situation he turns this request in uh, uh, of healing for uh, this centurion's servants into a teaching moment into a teachable opportunity. He turns and shares with uh, those who are following him, I have not found such great faith even in Israel, even among the Jews, even of the household 
uh, uh, of the Jews, even the nation uh, that that Jesus came uh, uh, specifically to seek and to save that which was lost. But here, this Gentile seems to have more faith than those uh, of the children of promise, if you will. And so, what kind of faith should we have? Uh, the 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 kind of faith, not uh, that just doesn't boast that it that it that it is a, a faith, but but that it is seen as something that has shaped the character of that individual life. And this is what Jesus is saying here. He said, I have not found such great faith. How would he have found it? Where would he have looked? It would have come from men's hearts. It would have come from men's receptive uh, attitudes to his word. It would have come from individuals who were willing to to learn and willing to grow and willing to seek uh, 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 God's word in a way that they might please him so even amongst Israel and sometimes uh, uh, you know we think that we are ahead and perhaps we are moving uh, behind perhaps we are not where we should be but Christ has evaluated all of Israel and compared them to the faith that is found in this Gentile centurion and to, to say, I haven't found this kind of faith even in Israel. I haven't found anybody that, would, that are willing to look at their lives and to see their shortcomings. I haven't found anybody that is willing to let their pride go and, and ask me for help. I haven't seen anybody crying out uh, that they have issues in their life. Uh, they are going along as though nothing is wrong with them. And we see this happen uh, a, a lot of time in, in our church services. And I've said this for years now, the least used place in a lot of our churches is the altar. We don't come to the altar. We 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 want to pray for everybody else. This this man is seeking help for his servant, but he recognizes himself. He recognizes his own shortcomings, and this is the kind of faith that moves God, moves God on our behalf, moves God to intervene when we can see ourselves and the word of God tells us the conditions that we're in the word of God reveals to us that we need a savior uh, Christ would have never come and this is something that Israel missed Christ never would have come to the household of, of Israel if they didn't need salvation Luke discovered this in the opening of his writing uh, that he did an investigation he wanted to offer credible things from eyewitnesses and so uh, uh, it is very important that that we understand that Christ wants to make a connection wants to establish a relationship with us uh, uh, through faith but it's very important that we see ourselves for what we are and I always say this about the church those of us that are saved sanctified and all of the other things that we say we are uh, we are nothing but sinners saved by the grace of God and it's very important that we see ourselves as God sees us if we think that we don't need Christ and we don't need his word then we're going to spend a lot of uh, uh, distressful days we are not going to get where we should get in life we're not going to have a, the kind of life that God wants us to have is because we don't see ourselves needing God we don't see ourselves needing to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God we don't see ourselves as being the one who is in need of prayer who is desperate who has a crisis situation we think we can fix it 
But Jesus said these words, Apart from me, in the 15th chapter of the book of St. John, Apart from me, ye can do nothing. So it's not a, uh, 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 a weakness. It's a strength to recognize that we need the Lord's help. And this centurion recognized he saw his servant's condition and he also saw his own condition. He knew, this centurion, that he was just as uh, in a dire strait as his servant. And so he recognizes that. So verse 10 says, uh, Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found the servant well. So God, through Jesus Christ, responded. God healed this man. Jesus healed this man uh, at the request of this centurion. His faith in Jesus Christ. His faith uh, in uh, understanding that he was a, 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 a wretch undone. His uh, attitude about his life was something that moved Jesus to heal this man and never going to his house. He spoke the word. He said something. This man was healed. This centurion's servant was healed. And so this is very important for us to learn. Uh, the centurion also recognized that Christ uh, as the one with authority to speak and be obeyed. So he uh, logically he reasoned that Jesus' authority can be compared uh, to his as a Roman centurion. He described how others obeyed without question uh, with the assumption being that Jesus possessed the same kind of authority except Jesus' authority was not earthly. So he had commanded even, uh, had command even over sickness and death. We need to, we need to think about this thing of not honoring, not recognizing Jesus as Lord. He has power over sickness and death. So the centurion's words and his character showed great faith. A degree of faith not seen among those who should have been examples to emulate among the Jews. His faith was commended by Jesus and his servant was healed at the time Jesus spoke it. Jesus' response teaches that faith in him, not nationality or privilege, is a key to pleasing him and becoming involved in his mission in the world. So the question here is do we have this kind of faith in Jesus? So we have his word and multiple experiences and yet we often fail to exercise faith that does not require seeing. So the question here is why is it difficult for many Christians to exercise the faith necessary for physical healing? And so I, I just, I was reminded as I was looking at this question and thinking about um, physical healing, there are a lot of things that are being said about that. I just want you to remember that God is able, uh, even though uh, the, the, the physical condition sometimes may be lifted, uh, sometimes it may not be lifted. But, but overall, God is able. And we have to keep that kind of faith. I would encourage you to read uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And I just want you to look at the fact that having faith is just one concept. But fighting to keep it in a battle, in a crisis, is a whole nother situation. And so as we have the faith and I want you to note that this centurion kept the faith in a desperate situation he knew 
God was still able. He knew Jesus could do it, though he didn't even have to come to his house. God can do it based on his word alone. He doesn't need all of the things that we might think that he might need. He doesn't need everything to be put into place like we might. If he speaks it, just like he did in Genesis, let there be light, the Bible says, and there was light. That is the power, that is the authority that Jesus possesses. And this centurion knew that. He understood that and he believed that wholeheartedly and though Christ was looking at his character, his faith was intact. I hope, trust and pray that you remember these things and I was uh, reflecting on my walk with the Lord as I was reading this and I have to go back and look at some things to see where I need to ask God to help me as well as I pray for others. So I want you to keep this in mind that this is a journey that we are on and we all need help in our lives. We need help in our faith walk. We need to keep the faith in the midst of, in the face of adversity and desperate situations. And so uh, I encourage you today to hold to God's unchanging hand. I encourage you today to keep the faith Keep reading your word and producing um, faith in your life. Keep uh, uh, remembering and, and going back to remember what God has spoken to you because his word, as this centurion found and as well as his servant, his word is full of power and authority over all of the conditions that you and I may have in our lives. So I want you to keep that in mind and just know uh, that we are praying that uh, God will strengthen you in the midst of. But we have a closing prayer here that I want to read. Dear God, thank you for giving us a Savior who intercedes for us and responds to our faith in extraordinary and unexpected ways. Help us through the Holy Spirit to deepen our faith in you so that we can be blessed and be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So again, until such time that the Lord Lord will permit us to come together again, we say God bless you.